G'day and welcome to Disc Golf Down Under. It's Matt here. And soon we'll be announcing the winner of the Fourth Circle Disc prize giveaway. But before we do, earlier this week I caught up with Reese Kruger, the owner of Fourth Circle Discs, and we had a chat about the challenges of starting up a disc golf manufacturing company in Australia. Uh, we also talked about the process of how to take a disc from concept through to market. And we had a chat about what's in the pipeline for Fourth Circle. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the interview. <laughs> okay, good day, Reese. Thanks for joining Disc Golf Down Under. How's it going? Ah, uh, not too bad. Just getting back into the swing of things up here in, in well, rainy Brisbane today, but I think it stormed all over the country at the moment. Yeah, but, raining down yeah. here too in Sydney. Tell us, how did you get into disc golf and how long have you been playing? Um, I've been playing, I think it's coming up 10 years now. So I first, I think it was actually end of 2010, I was in Europe backpacking, same with some friends in Sweden, uh, there for a few weeks on their couch and uh, we uh, told me, well, they told me about this Frisbee golf game that they wanted to play and take me out to. So I went down to local 18 hole course and bought a disc and started playing it. And then I think I played, that was like I had a week and a half left there. And I think I played about five times in the week and a half. I think probably almost 36 holes every time we got out there. So I just instantly a little bit hooked and then went to Finland played a handful of times in the three months I was there uh, and then came back to Australia, sort of saw the state of one of the courses that was right near me uh, back in the uh, days of Logan. Anyone that's played here and seen the famous Paul Arden YouTube video of putting at a basket that doesn't even move and coming back out. So I think it was a year after that, I actually played in Felberg Park in Brisbane and met some local guys up here that played and uh, got got back into it and I uh, started playing casually and then pretty quickly got into going to events and meeting the the um, people from around the country. Yep, that's great. And um, tell us a bit about how you kicked off Fourth Circle Disc. So, um, Fourth Circle, originally I started running events uh, back in, I think the first, first event I ran was 2000, maybe 2012, 2013 on the Gold Coast. And the first year was the J&R Dirty Disc Challenge, I think it was called, uh, which then turned into the Gold Coast Classic uh, the following year to after, I think the third year of that, so 2014, I uh, made that into an A tier on the Gold Coast. And originally Four Circle had started as a, so I used it sort of as an event running company. I'd been drawing logos and working on some stuff for a while, some ideas. I uh, actually pulled this down earlier because um, it's the, you can see the little, that was the first incarnation of the uh, of Fourth Circle. So that was from 2014. That was the logo I drew back then. Um, my mate that did this uh, for me, the Gold Coast Classic logo, I ended up chucking it in at the last minute and said, oh, you may as well put the, the uh, the business, or not the business, but the company you've been working on, uh, put that on there as well, a little bit of promotion. So I added that on and I think it was 2015, uh, one of the guys started, uh, that was selling discs in Brisbane, moved out to Granite Mountain uh, and started that in Lee. And there was no one selling discs in Brisbane. Uh, I bought a shop starter kit off uh, Innova Australia, which was, I think, about 200 discs and decided to use Fourth Circle to start selling under that name. Uh, I think that continued for a few years. I got sponsored by RPM in 2015 as well, um, was promoting doing them. So, like, huge shout out to them. They're a semi-local company and shown so much support here in Australia and they still sponsor me now. I'm still on their ambassador team. They're just, they're amazing guys and I work closely with them. We always discuss and see what each other's doing is to not sort of come out with the same thing at the same time and try and support each other where we can, which is awesome uh, to have, still have that relationship with them. Um, it was 2017, I started toying with the idea of making this, being sponsored for two years, selling this for 
like two years at that point and seeing how how this went and what this sold and everything uh, I, was, I had a pretty good idea uh, I, I broke my hand I was in Finland playing European Open and uh, hit a tree and broke a piece of bone off in my hand when that happened I realized like I couldn't do the job that I was doing I couldn't play disc golf for six months until it healed I was kind of stuck there what am I going to do like I felt like there wasn't really a, a long-term business for me in selling this I didn't want to go the online shop route there was a lot of people coming in and going uh, I wanted to do something different and that's when I thought well I have this experience in selling this I've been sponsored I've been representing a brand I've been pushing that brand maybe it's a good maybe I have a lot of experience and knowledge to go out on doing it myself and push my own brand uh, and so yeah that's that's how it came up and I was talking with RPM about molding this through them uh, when was talking with Pro Discus uh, when ended up going through with those guys uh, the plan was always to end up doing it here in Australia uh, I thought it was going to be a little bit of a long longer term thing but uh, the issues that I had, it took like a year from ordering till I eventually got the first disc. So during that time, I went and looked everywhere and spoke to a lot of people and realized that I could very well do it here and locally on the Gold Coast. So that's how, yeah, pretty much. And since 2018 now, I've had, had a disc out and just this year, we've now had two locally made discs, which is, which is a huge thing and a bit more of a relief and a lot easier to, to get done. Is great and so the name fourth circle did that come from the logo or was there some significance behind that name um yeah <laughs> originally it came from the logo uh i've always i always really love the huck lab logo uh which is the history of that is actually it's based on the japanese uh was it tomoe symbol which i actually have tattooed on the back of my hand uh, so the Huck Lab symbol was actually came from that. You can see it a bit more clearly in the dark areas of it. Um, so of course I didn't want to go down the route of copying or doing something similar to that, but I was I wanted to try and incorporate the what that symbol was about and the idea, like and the the actual look of it uh, with spit like spinning look of it. I wanted to try and incorporate that into into my logo. So. I think I was drawing for like six months, different things, different ideas. Eventually, that one I showed you before on that disc was what I ended with, uh, and then then I started thinking about names, and <laughs> it was I, um, I think it was yeah I sort of looked up four circle and tried. I'm like, oh, there's four circles. There's, I'm like, what can be the representation of that in disc golf? And my thoughts at the time were like. You got the top of the basket, you got the top of the cage, which are two circles that you've got to get the disc into, which is another circle. And then you've got another one, which is the big one around the outside that when you're playing disc golf, you want to land in the putting circle. So that was the where I came up, how I eventually came up with four circle, four circle disc. So the idea behind it is the, the fourth circle is the, the disc in your hand. And you're looking from a distance and you've got the top of the basket, the bottom, the, the top of the cage, and then you've got the circle, big circle around it all. So if you're lining it up and you can sit, sit it like that, that's sort of the image of it. Yeah, um, okay. hoping to get a, a, um, a digital thing done at some point, so like a video of like someone lining up a disc at a basket with the 10 meter circle marked and sort of fade in and try and pull it into logo. But yeah, <laughs> essentially where it came from. Okay, well, without giving any secrets away, take us through the process of, you know, taking a, an idea of a disc all the way through to getting it into shops. Um, it takes quite a bit of time, a lot more money than I expected. Uh, there's, there's little bits you don't expect. You have the, you go to somebody and say, oh, to get a mold, it's gonna be this much, to have a run, it's gonna be this much. You think, okay, cool. But then you've got, there's a lot of other fees. You've got to think about stamping, about the, they come out with flashing. So you've got to think about getting rid of that. You've got to um, think about testing the actual disc, uh, pay, paying fees for that if you need to retool. So it's quite a bit of more time than expected. Like I give it about from starting to finish, 
two to three months normally for each disc. So uh, normally it takes a month to five weeks for the mold to be made. Uh, normally I'll go sit with the, the tool maker, uh, sit down with him, take some drawings, show him generalized shape. I'll take some other discs that are maybe I'll like, it's has a similar top uh, shape to what, what I'm after on my disc. And I'll take that as a, to show him something has a similar bottom or a similar depth or nose height. I'll sort of just take a few examples. Uh, it's been a little bit of a learning curve for him as well, because he's never done anything like this and also doesn't understand the aerodynamics, the no, what nose height can do. So uh, then once that comes back, we go test it at the factory. Uh, I'll go out and throw it for a few days. I'll get a, ring up a few people, have a few people throw it, see, watch them, see how it flies. If there needs to be anything done, take a, like I'll give them a call and say, okay, I need uh, like the dingo, for instance. I needed some more uh, shape added on on that bottom wing. It was originally came out to overstable. This was, that was when I realized that I hadn't properly conveyed to him the importance of nose height. So he was just basing it off something, just going, okay, I'll just even it all up for the plates. Um, for him, it wasn't something he was conscious of that, oh, the nose height needs to be exactly here. So that was something I learned very, after that one was, oh, I need to, there's some things that I need to discuss and need to convey across to him. Um, so after that, we sort of retooled that twice, I think, to get it right, we had to bring some weight off. Then test again, get 20, 30 made, send off to PDGA, wait for that to come back and then do the run, get stamping done, trim them, weigh them and then ready to go. So um, luckily being local now, getting on Gold Coast, I uh, put in an order today for another 1,200 Firehawks. That should be done by the end of the month. Uh, so which pretty much means beginning of December, they'll be picked up, weighed, trimmed and stamped. So I get that done within a couple of days once I pick them up. So it's, um, yeah, it's a, a faster process from the ordering. It just depends. Sometimes it could be a week. depends if they've got plastic sitting there. They need to order it in. But, yeah, I give it two to three months for each mould to go through the whole process. Yep. No, that's really interesting. I come from an engineering background myself, so I understand the, the issues with moulding and, and dyes and tools and things like that. But would that be your biggest challenge or has there been other challenges that you've had to overcome? Um, it's always a bit of a challenge because once a plastic shrinks and comes out and drops, you're gonna, you can get a slightly different shape. So I've, this is where my, I guess, my experience comes in is I know what I can do to sort of get, fix it up a little bit like the original fire, first run firehawk came out so unstable. Uh, it was just, I think there's a video I put up on YouTube of throwing it on a almost 90 degree hyzer and it flipping up all the way and over and just going, okay, wow, yeah, that, that needs to be ripped off. <laughs> so there's just a few, few things like that that cause problems. But generally now it's, it's really smooth. Originally there was issues when I was getting it done through ProDiscus, it was, I wasn't able to, to properly test it and have it retooled. They, um, they made a first batch and didn't get approved. The nose was too sharp. Uh, so it had to be, I got sent half of them. So I had about six or 700 discs here that weren't approved, uh, which I'm, I'd ask, I wasn't sure why they had made the run before getting approval, uh, but they had to sort of fix, get it fixed and rerun it and, re and the approval went through. So that that was a really big headache and a really big challenge. It was a lot of money. It was like a year from putting it in to when I eventually got the finished product. So, I mean, I, I was expecting three to four months. It gave another one to two months because it was being done over there for shipping. Like that set me back a long time. And it wasn't until the end of last year that I actually, from 2017, that I could work on the second disc. So my, I was expecting six months after the first one to get out another disc. So by this point, I, I was hoping I'd have almost 10 discs by now, but it's just, yeah. So that, that's been the biggest challenge is just was getting over that first hurdle and just also accepting this. It's a long process. It's not, it's not going to be a um, viable business for, for quite a while. 
So I've got to expect that it's just going to plug away. Sometimes I'll have the money there to put it to almost get a whole run made. Other times I need to scramble and, and everything, but I've got a really good relationship with the plastics factory. So uh, they're like, yeah, they're, they're pretty good with it now. So sometimes I'll, they'll invoice me and only expect half and wait another two weeks, three weeks for the other bit. So like gives me a bit of space to get those done and get them out there uh, earlier than, than I might be able to otherwise. So um, now a question that's tricky to answer for any doting parent, but as a father to three Aussie discs, which one's your favorite? Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Per, as, as a personal favorite, my, the dingo is, it actually came out more stable than I wanted it to. I wanted it to be a straighter, a mid range, something that I was going to be able to market and sell towards, towards beginners. So how it's come out is better for me in my game. So I like absolutely love that disc and I've, I've now got one that I've been beating and I had one disc rounds and two disc rounds for the first two months it came out just to learn it and get one beaten in. And that now flies like a, like a buzz. It just goes dead straight, doesn't fade, doesn't turn like it just, so but that thing is just, just awesome to me. Uh, I think that one's going to hold a special place. The Firehawk, I like, it's really cool. Like I, when I came across that name and the reference and the meaning behind it was just, just really, really good. Like I really love that name uh, and the, the flight of it. I'm, I've, we've been so happy. It's like everyone can throw it. Bigger arm speeds can throw it. It's not too flippy for us, but newer players are able to throw them and control them and throw them dead straight. And that's that was a that was such a proud moment for me, running a uh, running a clinic I did a few weeks or a month ago when I first came out, and teaching people how to throw and teaching them with those, and seeing like uh, there were, there was a girl, I think Caitlin, who came out, uh, and I saw her throw one of those so far dead straight, and that to me was such a proud moment to go, this disc is awesome. Like a new a newer player can come out and throw this dead straight and get distance off it. I like this is going to be awesome. So it, yeah, it's that's great. I mean, on a big Anheuser, I can those things just go and go and go. So it's I have a lot of use for it. So it's, it's brought a shot back in my game that I hadn't been throwing for for a while, which is nice. Yeah, no, I agree. I, um, when I first threw it, I, I had a huge smile on my face. I had a lot of fun with the uh, Firehawk um, and it's been a while since I've thrown a disc and, and had so much fun with it. And uh, as yeah. you, my, my review showed that it's, it is a fun disc. Uh, and it, as you said, it's, it brings a part of the game. You can have those nice, long, sweeping Anheuser's out to the right and uh, it, it's just good for that. Yeah, yeah, so I'm so happy with how that's come out. Yeah. So um, we've got Aussie Disc Golf Day coming up on uh, 21st of November. Tell us how Four Circle Discs are involved. Ah, yeah, this is this has taken off. This is huge. Um, so amazing to see the response and how it's going to have, like at the moment it's starting to approach 600 people going to be playing all over the country on the same day in the same essentially event, which is, yeah, crazy to even think about that during this year. Um, I've been quite uh, involved with ADG in the past. I was actually meant to, I was going to be putting in a bid to run the Australian Championships in Queensland for next year. Uh, so I was preparing to do that when COVID was happening. I, so I was chatting with, uh, with a few of the ADG people, because, trying to find out what's happening with DeLong, if they were going to put it off for a year, because that will mean that I'm not putting the bid in yet for next year. So I'd, I'd been sort of in talks and the idea was floated about, well, we want to try and get something happening. We want to try and get um, get this. And the idea that was, was put to me was like, well, if we can't have a lot of people, maybe we can just have a ton of small events all over the country that everyone can, uh, can participate in. 
and they were like, we'd really want to get a like a disc out to everybody. Uh, and I sort of told them, well, I've actually been working on a fairway driver that's going to be a beginner friendly disc. Like, is this something you guys would be interested in for that day? So we sort of had discussions and I sort of, it was a tight timeline. Like it only came out two months ago now, the Firehawk. So it was, yeah, if, if there was any big problems, it may not have worked out, but everything went in our favor and the, the disc got sort of everything got finished and got put through. So yes, yeah, that's sort of how it, it just was a small idea floated around at first that started to gain some traction when I could get some custom disc stamped uh, and so sort of looking at that side of things, it was also, they wanted to have the four circle logo on the disc as well, which I wasn't too worried about at first, but it gave me a unique opportunity that, uh, which everyone will see every single event that these discs are going to is going to have a different disc to give out to everybody. So there was a hundred different combinations of stamps and color of this. So each disc has 25 different stamp color combinations. So either the Australian disc golf is written in one color in the four circle logo or vice versa or different colors. So I was really happy when I could add that to it and mix that up and then realize I'm like, it's going to take a bit of um, planning to stamp that. Like it was more difficult than just stamping a disc and going, okay, we need 30 of this color with this color and 30 of this and just do it. It was taking different piles, different sections, getting different colors on that and then sorting them out and then making sure I was packing, uh, taking from certain piles for each order so that every event is going to have, a, everyone's going to have a unique disc, which I think is going to help add to the, the feel of the day, which is going to be really cool. Um, yeah, so the stamping is uh, is quite amazing. Even on the firehawks that uh, that come out, they're they're quite good. The the nice colours and the the foil is is really really good. Yeah, it's been a learning process. I'm doing it all myself. Bought a cheap machine from China three years ago to start doing it. Uh, it's testing and testing. I've had to buy two generate uh, air compressors to try and get that thing uh, up to how it should be working properly. But it's only only been this year that I finally got it to the like going properly which is finally good for this point now though but yeah well before we wrap up um what's next in the pipeline for four circle discs do you have another disc in mind or are you just waiting to see how the firehawk goes we i have been working on a putter at the moment uh i was going to start doing it this year uh but i've actually realized i did a stock take of everything i had while i'm and after Kingsley's interview on Smashbox telling everyone that I was scrambling to find more blank discs, uh, today, what do I have left? I think I have 10 stamped, like stock stamp Firehawks left. And that's it. So I think I have about five uh, orange, five clear without a stamp on them. And then I have about 10 stock left after I've done all the orders this week. So uh, I have my online shop still has... 30, 40 discs on there uh, that are separate, but I'm out of Firehawks, which is crazy. Uh, so I've reordered today. So hopefully they'll be done by December, early December. Uh, so that's set me back with the next disc a little bit. So I'll be waiting on that. Uh, once those are in, I get a few of those out. I'll get the uh, putter started. So that was going to be due to be started now, but I've realized that there's a lot of money for another run of Firehawks that I've got to get done first. And uh, it's important to keep those going, but I think I'll be in a good position after the, I get another 1,200 of these. Uh, I won't have the 500 to go to ADG this time. So there'll be, there'll be <laughs> quite a few left um, for a while. So yeah, once that's done, so I'm hoping maybe I can start, uh, start a, the tooling of it. The, the design is done. Uh, the drawing, everything's is done now. It's done this week. Uh, the design, hopefully the tooling can be done, started next month. Uh, it won't be tested until the end of January when the plastics comes back, plastic factory comes back from their Christmas break. Um, we get a slot in there. So hopefully they should be able to put us in straight away if, if we've got it to be tested. So hopefully end of February, March, I'll be looking at uh, putter coming out. So that's going to be a beaded uh, putter 
you can do something like a KC AVR gauntlet wizard, not exactly like those, of course, but along that big bead sort of zero one zero two uh, flight. Uh, so, and the idea at the moment is a very flat top that's going to be should come out slightly concave, so it's going to be a very rounded nose with a slight concave for your thumb to sit behind. Out of if ever anybody looks through my bag, always notices for some reason I always pick the um, slightly concave putters out of every every batch of whatever I'm putting with at that time. They all seem to have a slight dip in, which I feel like gives you a little bit more control from the thumb. So, uh, so you're kind of pushing. You're not your thumb's not sliding down the edges. You're trying to push it off the disc. You're actually pushing with um, something that has a little bit of resistance. So. I quite like that and I'm going to try and get it onto this disc and see how it goes. And then next year, we'll hopefully I'll get another two to three discs, which will be going back up to a straight distance driver, a more stable, sorry, a less stable mid-range, so a straight distance driver, straight mid-range, and then we'll be going to a straight to overstable fairway driver will be the, the third one, hopefully, after the putter. Okay, we'll be looking forward to that. Yep. Okay, well, thanks, uh, Reese, for joining Disc Golf Down Under. On behalf of all Aussie disc golfers, um, it's, uh, it's great that you're supporting the Aussie Disc Golf Day, and uh, I think we're all going to be looking forward to it and getting our um, Firehawk. I think people are going to yeah. be really uh, enjoy that disc. It's, it's, uh, I had a lot of fun with it. I'm sure everybody out there is going to enjoy it as well. So, yeah, thanks yeah. for joining us, and uh, a couple of lucky viewers out there are going to win some discs as well. So, yeah, thanks, yeah, Reese, awesome. for sending them down. Yeah. No problem at all. Thanks for giving those out. And thank you very much for all the reviews and, and work you're doing. So a huge thanks to Reese Kruger there for joining us from Four Circle Discs and giving us an insight into developing uh, a disc in Australia and, uh, and supporting the Australian disc golf scene. So let's get into the giveaway now. So we're going to be giving away the YouTube Ultra Pack, which will include a Ultra Tie Pan. We also have an Echo Dingo and an Echo Firehawk. So let's start up the random number generator and see who wins. So as a reminder, uh, you had the opportunity to get up to three entries. So if you commented on each of the three videos, you got three entries. So let's start the prize draw. And the winner of the YouTube Ultra Pack from Full Circle Discs is Callum Dower. So well done, Callum. Uh, please drop me a message. I'll try and get in contact with you via YouTube. Uh, you can contact me through, there's an email address in the video description, uh, or you can also contact me through the Facebook page. So I'll get those discs out to you as soon as possible. And if you're looking for the winner of the Facebook prize pack, then you'll need to jump over to the Disc Golf Down Under Facebook page and check that out. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, please give a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Disc Golf Down Under. Also, please leave a comment down below, especially if you can thank Reese for his time and support of the Australian disc golf community. So that's it for this one. Good luck on the golf course and we'll catch you in the next one.